Dick Grayson was Batman's first sidekick and the original teenage superhero that led to so many more being created in comics. And of course, he is a founding member of both the Titans and, in the animated show, Young Justice. He is an infamous superhero and of course, like any true hero, he has died many, many times over the years. Though that usually doesn't stop him for long, as superheroes never stay dead. But we are going to go over his 5 best deaths in media so far. Injustice In the first Injustice video game, we learn that Dick Grayson was killed by Damian Wayne. Although we don't get any real details, though these are later revealed in the comic, which was then adapted into an animated film. Now, Dick Grayson and Damian are brothers, and they're actually very close. In fact, Damian might be closer to Dick than he is to Batman. So, why would he kill him? Well, the answer is it was sort of an accident. Damian and Dick were fighting supervillains at Arkham Asylum, and Damian was being his normal, explosive, obnoxious, angry self, and Dick was trying to keep him calm and help him to fight the criminals. Which is why Damian lost it, as he doesn't like being told what to do. Now, it doesn't really make sense, but remember, this is a very angry person, so he's easy to set off. And so, he throws one of his sticks at Nightwing's head. And this is actually something that Damian does all the time in training. And Dick Grayson always catches it, or dodges it. So, Damian thought he'd just dodge it this time, but he didn't as they are in the thick of battle, and Dick Grayson is focusing on the attacks from the enemy, not from his allies. And Dick is knocked out and falls over, and he falls badly, breaking his neck and dying almost instantly. Now, Damien didn't want this, and he hates himself for it, but not nearly as much as Batman hates Damien. He blames him for killing his son, and he wants nothing more to do with him. Which, in a way, is why Damien became so loyal to Superman. That and the fact that Damien does actually agree with killing criminals. Now, the death itself is rather simple, a lot like a normal day-to-day -day accident, where someone just falls wrong and badly injures themselves. So it's not exactly an epic superhero death, which, in a way, is what makes it so tragic. The death was completely unnecessary, and Grayson didn't even die saving the world like a hero should. Now, of course, this isn't the end of Dick Grayson in this universe, because as a ghost, he gets the superpower to possess the living. He even saves the life of Damian Wayne, and the two of them have a little heart to heart. And Grayson tells him that he doesn't actually blame him for killing him, and that Damian should move on with his life, but maybe be a little bit less violent going forwards, showing once again how good a person Grayson is, and kind of how much better he is than Damian Wayne. Apocalypse War in Apocalypse War, the Justice League attacked Darkseid en masse in order to take him out and end his threat to Earth once and for all. But instead, they get the living hell beaten out of them, as Darkseid knew they were coming and so he was ready for them, and he has cloned a new batch of parademons that are based on Superman's DNA, so they are insanely strong. Not as strong as the Doomsday Darkseid made from Superman's DNA before, but these parademons are still pretty powerful and they prove to be too much for every single member of the League, as they are just crazy outnumbered. And if godlike beings can't beat them, then what chances Dick Grayson have? None whatsoever, which is why he dies. Not trying to be cruel to Dick Grayson there, but he is essentially fighting an army of dangerous Kryptonians who all want to murder him. Of course, it doesn't end for Grayson there, oh no. After Damien has escaped the fight, he later assumes the mantle of the Demon's Head, and takes over the League of Assassins. And of course, this means he takes possession over the world's Lazarus Pits. And he decides to put Grayson in one and bring him back to life. Now, in the main DC Universe, that would actually be pretty much fine, as the Pits can seemingly resurrect a body no matter how badly damaged it is. But in the New 52 films, the Pits aren't quite that powerful, not by a long shot. And while they do manage to bring Grayson back to life, they don't bring his mind back. At least, not completely. Grayson is essentially a feral animal, so crazy and aggressive that Damien has no choice but to keep him in a straitjacket and locked in a padded cell. Because he is completely mental, and in all honesty, Damien should have either let him stay dead, or at the very least, put him out of his misery. As living like this is a fate far worse than death. Harley Quinn In Season 4 of Harley Quinn, Nightwing is found dead, and is buried with a coffin that has a golden ass on it, in order to honour Dick Grayson's amazing backside, 
It's something they go on about a lot in this show. Now this is actually quite silly, and it kind of distracts from the tragedy of Dick Grayson being dead to be honest. But this show is quite silly at times. Now a key plot point of this season is his death, and finding out who killed him. Now Joker does take the credit, but Batgirl is able to disprove this as she finds camera footage that Joker is in a hospital at the time when Nightwing was killed. So he was basically just trying to inflate his reputation. But eventually it is revealed that Harley is the one who killed him. Now at the beginning of the season, Harley has become a member of the Bat family and turned into a kind of hero. But unfortunately she is not particularly well liked, or at least trusted, by the Bat family. So when Batgirl disappears, Nightwing immediately suspects Harley has betrayed them and he tracks her. Now she hasn't actually hurt Batgirl at all, but Grayson doesn't really check this and he just accuses her. Now at this point Harley is suffering with a sleepwalking disorder and so she goes a bit crazy and attacks Nightwing and in the fight she accidentally kills him. Which personally I think doesn't really make sense as he is far better trained as a fighter and she is completely out of it in a sleepwalking state. But hey, there you go, that's how the show was written. And so Nightwing dies needlessly in a complete misunderstanding, which does actually seem to happen quite often with him. Of course, Dick Grayson doesn't stay dead, as Talia and Damien use a Lazarus pit to bring him back. And he comes back, bloodthirsty for revenge against Harley Quinn for killing him. Though that's for the later seasons of the show that haven't been released yet at the making of this video. The Arkhamverse. Now in the Arkham Knight game, we finally get to see Dick Grayson as Nightwing, and even better, we get to play as him. And while there are several deaths if you fail a mission, with some interesting after death villain monologues, it's the death in game that we're focusing on. In the main campaign, Nightwing has come to town to help Batman shut down Penguin's gun running operation. And after shutting down a few of them, Nightwing decides that they should split up to finish the job faster. Unfortunately, while doing this, he is captured by the Penguin, and Batman has to go rescue him. However, while you're playing the game, you can decide not to rescue Nightwing, and watch as Penguin executes Grayson right in front of you. Now, it is a little sadistic to do, and it does count as a game over, and you have to go back and do the scene again, as Batman can't let his favourite son die after all. But it's still quite brutal to watch, and every now and then when I play the game, I do let him die just for a little bit of fun. Though this isn't the only time that he does die in the Arkhamverse. In the VR game, we see his death once again. It's actually quite a simple playthrough this game, I should say, but the Batcave does look amazing, and there are a few scenes that are actually worth it. But the main plot of the game is investigating the murder of Dick Grayson, only to discover that Batman's going insane from the Joker's blood in his veins, and that he is the one who killed him. Turns out Batman beat Nightwing to death in an alley, and this is probably the best fight to the death that Nightwing has ever had. Usually he dies in quite a simple way after all. At least this time he was killed by a worthy opponent who knew his moves and whom he would hesitate against fighting. It is his father after all. So it does make a lot of sense that Batman could kill him. Of course it is later revealed that this isn't real and it's all in Batman's head. And that he is having some sort of psychotic murder nightmare thanks to the Joker blood messing up his mind. So Nightwing is still very much alive, though we do get to watch him die, and so I thought it was worth mentioning. Titans Dick Grayson also dies in the Titans live action series, though personally I thought this one was a bit odd, even by his normal standards of death. Now basically in the show, the Red Hood has turned public opinion against the Titans, and so the people of Gotham think that Red Hood is a hero protecting the city, and that the Titans are all villains. So when Nightwing is beating Red Hood in a fight, one of the bystanders decides to shoot Nightwing in the back and kills him. Now I'm not a fan of this death, as Nightwing is wearing special bulletproof armour, and it always seems a bit weird when heroes, whom fight ninjas and supervillains just fine, then end up getting killed by random undrained people with guns. I mean, it's just not very good is it? So I can't say I particularly like this death, as it just seems a bit, well, silly, unnecessary, and doesn't really make sense. Though of course Nightwing doesn't stay dead for long, as they of course use a Lazarus pit to bring him back once again. Though this time he seems less crazy than the other times. Seems like the Lazarus pits in the Titans show pretty much just cure you without any side effects. But those are the five best deaths of Nightwing. Now it does have to be said that these are not the typical hero deaths. 
He doesn't die saving the world or nobly sacrificing himself, which is how heroes are meant to go. Instead, his death seemed just, well, unnecessary, accidental, or just some sort of misunderstanding. They are very run-of-the-mill and human ways of going. But their Nightwing has always been a very down-to-earth hero, focusing more on helping the common people than fighting overpowered supervillains. He has fought them at times, of course, but usually he's more of a street fighter. Though still, I do wish his deaths had been a bit more... well, just a bit more, quite frankly. They were a little too unnecessary for the most part. But still, if a man without powers does become a hero, then death is quite likely on the table when going up against criminals. So in some respects, this does actually make quite a lot of sense that he would die quite plainly. Still, I don't really think it's very epic, and heroes do need to have more epic deaths. But what do you think? Should Dick Grayson have a more heroic and epic death? Or do you quite like the fact that he dies quite plainly? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with any other deaths that you've come up with yourself. I mean, if you've got a great death of Dick Grayson or Nightwing, then please write the whole scenario, because quite frankly, I would love to read it. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.